Hey everyone, your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today, so let's get started. Today is episode 221, How to Celebrate the 4th of July. And the show notes for today's episode can be found at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 221. Such a nice summer holiday. I mean, obviously for so many reasons, a patriotic spirit, and it just, you know, it brings everyone together. Um, even if you don't do anything spectacular, you're just sort of feeling at one with your countrymen mm-hmm. on the 4th of July, and there's all these sweet little parades and things like that going on all across America. So it's just a really nice day to enjoy, hopefully, the beautiful weather and some of your neighbors and friends and family. And we have some ideas today how you could even take it up a notch and Mm -hmm. light your sparkler a little brighter this year. (laughs) It's a great day around here to find a pool to to go to and spend the day at the pool because it's usually so blistering hot here hot and humid. And then in the evening, do something like have a cookout. So maybe we'll even talk about some good recipes as well. Yeah, that sounds that sounds lovely. Yes. And I think here, yeah, you would definitely in South Texas need to be at a pool or really I prefer to spend the heat of the day indoors and then and then check <laughs> the temperature. Like you check the rain in other parts of the mm-hmm, country, we check mm-hmm. the temperature in the evening before we go outside to see if it's safe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No sparklers indoors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, outdoors, I mean, and now there's so many things you can do. Let's say you're in a place that's very hot. Some of the things you can do is now I've seen just like some of the big restaurants, you know, individuals can buy these misting systems to kind of cool off their porches which mm-hmm. I think is a great mm-hmm. idea. And it just kind of sprays a mist of air and it kind of cools off as the air water evaporates and it cools the air on your porch. And then there's also so many wonderful options for fans, outdoor fans on your porch as well. So I, I love that idea. And actually, and I don't know what it ca- it's called. I saw it on um, my Instagram feed. It almost looks like a wristwatch and you could either cool yourself down or heat yourself up using this wristwatch. Uh, I'm going to need a lot more than a rich. Watch. Well, but I, <laughs> but I think it, it hits that it hits your, cause you have cooling spots on your, um, on your wrist and it, Again, it and it, that's not going to be enough emanates, but it emanates this, uh, cool, um, you know, why don't you try it and let us know. If it works. I'm, Hey, I'm so excited about this because I certainly don't like to be out in the heat of the day. Cause it does get pretty, pretty rotten hot around here. But uh, yeah, let's talk about some fun things today that we can, that you can do during the 4th of July. And, and um, I just want to talk about um, collecting great red, white, and blue plastic wear. Um, Melamine, is that what it's called? Melamine. Melamine, the plastic, uh, like the, the hard plastic dishes. And we see them everywhere now. I was just to Target the other day. I couldn't get over the lovely collection, but it was a coral color, but it was really beautiful. But over the last couple of years, I've collected red, white, and blue. And I've collected red and white um, starred bowls and white square plates and red, white, and blue um, uh, utensils and, um, it just has so much fun with it. So that's something that you can do and, and they're not very expensive and they are something that will last years and years. So just get, get out your red, white, and blue and enjoy the summer. I have a really cute idea I saw on Pinterest and, um, I just thought this was so adorable. If you're going to have people over for a picnic or, you're going to spend time outdoors. Um, there, there are these big star stencils and with red, white, and blue spray paint, you can spray paint your grass. So it has all these. Oh no, uh, that's so fun. The cutest idea ever. These, so you have all these. Spray paint. I mean, <laughs> wait, wow. I have some. <laughs> red, white, oh, and blue wow. and gold. And gold uh, and maybe black. <laughs> Okay. Yes, but you can spray paint stars on the grass. Okay, and where did you see that? I saw it on Pinterest. Show. It on was Pinterest. adorable. Okay, so they're big, mm-hmm. giant. I'm going to look for it. I, Start, I can't you, guarantee anybody, so don't get mad if you don't you, see it, but I'm going to look. Stencils, with star stencils. <laughs> giant and then star giant stencils star, for your mm-hmm. grass. 
Okay. And, and, uh, you spray paint them. So, I mean, eventually your grass will grow and you can cut it and it'll be fine. You'll be green oh, again. I, okay. Nobody worry about that because I stopped spray painting in the back because when I do the black, it sometimes swooshes around and gets on my house, which is bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I've mm-hmm. taken it to the, the far front lawn. And at first I was bringing out the drop cloth and the whole thing. And then I was like, you know what? The grass is going to get cut. Who cares? And so mm-hmm. I just spray paint on there. And yeah, I mean, in, you know, l- less than a week, it's gone. But do you, you use a drop cloth and then the residual gets on the grass? Well, I, as I said, I started with the drop cloth, but then I was slipping. Oh like I gosh. took a big, I took a rocker and then I was like the drop cloth. And then at one point, I guess I had all my stuff except the drop cloth. And I was like, eh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> So I kind of had some black on mm-hmm. the grass, oh, but. but it's fine. Mm-hmm. Black grass, you know. Wah, wah. But wouldn't star stencils be fun if you had kids? I mean, I just think that's so adorable. They would love that. Oh, well, you know, that reminds me, speaking of spraying the grass, we had been out of town for a couple of weeks. This was several years ago. And when we came back, we were on, it was right before our vacation. When we came back, I was hosting a big, big anniversary party, 50th wedding anniversary party for my in-laws. And I had been planning this for months and had done so much work on it. Anyway, when we came back in the dark, the next day I woke up and looked out in the front yard and there was a huge, I mean, we had some sort of bad uh, problem with the grass. There was probably a five foot brown patch. I think actually oh. probably was brown patch in my front yard. And I think uh, you're, cause I know you're a problem sol- solver. I no, think I, I didn't coming. do it. No, I thought about, <laughs> so, because someone said spray paint it green. I didn't do it, but uh, yeah, it was pretty rough. I don't, I can't remember what I did, but it was just a very, now I would just kind of go, oh, whatever. But you know, back, then, <laughs> back then it was very, very. Put exciting. a rug on it. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it yeah, was a pretty. It was it. it was very large spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, that's so. Funny. I'm I'm possessed with using bandanas in the summertime. Okay, and they're so inexpensive. You can get them at you know your um um uh, like craft stores. Really, yeah. like very inexpensive. And I stuck up on with red and blue ones. Like, and I use them as napkins uh, during the summer. But I was again. I'm little bit of a Pinterest junkie looking at Pinterest and thinking, oh yeah, you could just wrap your uh, utensils in bandanas. Wouldn't that be a cute idea? So in, cute. Red, white, and blue. But then let's take it a step further. I saw where they were sewn together and made into two different things, a table runner and an entire tablecloth made out of these squares of red, white, and blue bandanas. So that would be really easy to make. Or just maybe a runner. That's what I said. A table runner. Also. Oh, I thought you said a tablecloth. I'm sorry. Uh, a table runner. Both of them. Both of them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Isn't oh, that an God. adorable idea? Yes, that is really. No, I would pre-wash. Or like a placemat. Just you know, oh, gosh, you might have to iron it. Ugh. But mm-hmm. you know, just flat, maybe flatten it out for a few mm-hmm. days un- under some books, and then you could just even just use those table uh, as a placemat. I table. would say if you're going to make a bandana runner or um, tablecloth, you'd want to wash them because they they're they're cotton, so they might shrink, mm. and then just make sure they're. You know, pretty square. I I wouldn't con- I wouldn't you know get all crazy about okay they've got to be, you know you've got to be perfectly square about this because you can just it's summer you know be right. a little more laid back and just really enjoy that. But I thought, wow, this is something that I might have to do. That's cute. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I've got some blue and white. Of course, my bandanas are blue and white twall, French twall. Well, but I love, they are. Yes. I love using those as napkins when we mm-hmm. dine out on the back porch there. I mean, what I a nice idea. I got them for a big party we were having. So I actually think I have about 60 of those. I remember you yeah. talking about that before. Yeah. One of my very favorite little easy decorations that I see all over the place. Um, my friend, Rachel from Maison de Pax, her last name is Paxton. Isn't that cute? That, and she has a very French country style. Um, is that she t- had these three ball jars. One ball jar she painted um, blue, like a navy blue, and put little white stamped white stars all over it. And then the other two she painted with red and white stripes. And she lines them up. So on the left, it's the little 
blue star jar and then the red and white next to each other. It looks the, like the cutest little flag. And then she filled every, some um, them all with white flowers. It was the most darling centerpiece. Yeah. Oh, that adorable. sounds so cute. And you know what that reminds me of are the pillows that we did where there's stars, the blue and white stars on one side for our shop at shop mm-hmm. at, at our shop, which uh, we can include a, a link for that. But then, and then the red stripes on the back and you could do them either way. Mm-hmm. But when I showed them, I did the blue stripes on the left and then to the right were the two pillows mm-hmm. with the red stripes and it kind of made a flag and it was really just so adorable. It's ad- it was so I, adorable. I love that idea. And also we do have placemats that are red, white, and blue. Um, really yes. sort of high end, beautiful looking that go with the buff- red buffalo plaid. So with the know, pocket check- for the silver. Oh, check those out. They're just so beautifully made. Yes. Yes. Uh, I love to age the flags, mm-hmm. um, the little tiny ones that you could get at the dollar store or, you know, various places. Uh, you know, sometimes when you get them, they're sort of that crunchy, hard fabric and they look sort of brand new. I don't know, mm-hmm. There's something much more charming about them. I think if the white gets a little patina to it. So it's super easy. You just brew up some tea and probably I would suggest doing it in kind of a lasagna pan, you know, the metal ones that you can just buy. So the flags can lay flat and they're small. So you would just put some tea bags and some water and you can let your let it make sun tea out on, you know, the chair or on the porch or something like that. And when you've brewed it where it's a nice deep tea, then you're going to put your flags in there and just lay them flat. Try not to overlap them too much. And if you have to, you have more flags, just if there are overlapping, sort of swish them around as they're steeping in there and then just check them and see, oh, I, you know, now I think I like the color or it needs to be a little bit more, put them back in. And it's so fun. And so then, then you're, you just take them out when they're ready to dry, you know, drip them off and then just lay them out in the sun to dry. And then you have mm. these beautiful little, little aged flags. Mm. That is such a clever idea. And speaking of little flags, d- don't forget to use them all over the place. You know, tuck one in maybe with utensils and um, put one in maybe a little a little vase with a couple of flowers uh, in, uh, on, at a place setting mm-hmm. or stick them in your centerpiece or, you know, decorate your outside with them. So this is the time to get a little crazy with your with your American flags. I just think it's such a, a, a pretty time to use them. Yeah. Yeah. And I really love to use the little ones, but you know, the little ones, unless you're going to maybe line your walk with them or something where it's a defined space, if you just sort of stick them in, you know, the backyard, they get lost because they're little. So I would suggest you, know, you pick a few spots. If you're entertaining outside, the centerpiece, like Yvonne said, even if you're just clipping some boxwoods and they're sitting in a Mason jar, stick in, Maybe, you know, five flags or something like that. Mm-hmm. An odd Such number a of flags. cute idea. Mm-hmm. Or tie up your utensils, even if they're plastic wear. And uh, this might be pretty, you know, you can get that plastic uh, utensils in the gold or the silver now. Maybe get the gold or the silver. So tie the spoon, fork, and knife together with just a little string or twine and then stick a little flag in. So if it's a buffet How thing. How cute. Yeah, people could just grab them. There's a lot of really nice disposable flatware now. They do. It's not Mm -hmm. like the old days where it's just those cheapo looking (laughs) things. I was pretty impressed and got some really cute. I think it was not necessarily disposable, but I got some super inexpensive flatware again for this big party we had that was uh, really cute. So, I mean, you can look around. There are some beautiful things. And I think probably- mm -hmm. I don't dispose of it either. I wash it. See, you're like my mother. We were just, we just had Emma Kate's first birthday yeah. this past weekend. And, you know, we're, we're cleaning up all the pink utensils. And my mother goes, oh, should I wash these? Do you want to keep them? It's like, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. I wash them. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the ones we get from the Chinese restaurant, because I use them in the girl's lunch. I mean, we, I just have oh, a whole true. thing of forks. I mean, what's the point? It just has to go to a landfill. So mm-hmm. keep them out of there. So yeah. Oh, yeah. You and then the oh, straws. you're so much better at that than me. It's like, oh, oh I say to find a place too. to store them. I don't take straws from Starbucks. I have my own. <laughs> okay. Well, I've never liked the plastic straws. I've always preferred the paper, but the paper were so hard to find. So to be honest with you, I'm so thrilled that the plastic now is just persona non grata. Mm-hmm. 
Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Paper straws. I think that uh, you should they're everywhere now. You can get red, white, and blue or little ones with stars on them. And I just get a, a whole collection of them and put them in a, in a ball jar and use them to decorate your table and use those really cute paper, paper straws. <laughs> Um, but my girls complain about mm-hmm. the paper straws. I, I know they get a little they soggy. Get a little soggy. Yeah. Yes. The girls don't really like those. So I do reuse the, I just put the straws in my dishwasher. They just clean up fine. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. um, the, but the paper straws are so dang cute. Oh, I just, they I are. love I'm them. Saying, the I love striped them. ones. I have them in, I think every color. They're mm-hmm. really adorable. Mm-hmm. I know. It's one of those things where you just, you're like, oh yeah, that's what happens to, that's like the target fever. You go and you're like, yeah, these are so cute. Like I need to have these <laughs> lavender striped straws. I'm sure I'll have a party themed all about them yeah. someday. <laughs> and I'll be so glad I have them, but no, I think it's more like them. I need to have a party so I can use these cute lavender and white mm-hmm. straws. Exactly. exactly. I've been collecting so so much red, white, and blue outdoor dinnerware for maybe the last four or five years. I have this big collection, and so I have like the 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 polka dot straws and the striped straws and the star straws all in red, white, and blue. So it's fun to take those out and put them. Are on those the paper table. or plastic? They're all paper. Oh, cute. And you can get them, you can get them in store, you can get them online, but you can also get them at like craft stores. They usually have a big area that ha- carry all those kind of things. You can find the prettiest colors. And well, what I, and what I'm saying is now, since they're polit- the only politically correct straw, I think we'll be seeing more and more options in the, in the mm. paper straws. <laughs> they're politically correct. Yeah, everybody wants their <laughs> straw to be PC for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, here, I've got another idea that's really fun. 
And I, I must say that when I was doing research for this, well, you know, how much research do you really need to do? Because, you know, we just, we've been doing so many fun things all for years and years being bloggers, but I saw this on Pinterest and, and, um, loved it is a torn fabric garland, uh, banner garland. So it's a piece of, of like twine. And then it's all these red, white, and blue, pretty, pretty pieces of fabric that are torn and that are, um, looped over the twine and then tied. So you've got all these different colors all together and you do these groupings of them all the way along the twine. And then you can string them like on your mantle or if you're eating outside, you know, you can string them over the door or over if you have a porch, like on your porch, they were so adorable and probably so easy to make. Yeah, I think it's just a couple of inches wide and you maybe mm-hmm. start it with a snip and then, it, you know, you got to get that fabric going uh, and know, I to guess rip it mm-hmm. the right way on the grain of the fabric or the weave, right. I should say. And then you can just tear it. So you get that nice kind of free forming edge and then you just tie them in a knot or, you know, equidistant and boom, there mm-hmm. you go. There you go. It's a fun project for kids to get involved in too. We've made those um, with my girls in the past for their own parties. So in so you, they're usually really pink fun. or purple to go with those pink mm-hmm. or purple straws. <laughs> but, yeah. could, yep. Even yep. use those bandanas, rip them apart. And you could use those as well. Just don't rip they're your really flags. They're really pretty. Yes. You rip your flags. Oh, so I, yeah. like um, – like cans that crushed tomatoes would come in, something like that? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think what I would do is, I mean, I would probably like to keep things like that. So I'd probably modge podge it and then the fabric onto it. And then, you know, like tie a burlap you know, I have bow or something that, around that. And I've never, yeah. ever used it. What? Is, hey, why does favorite that, use for Why is that better? Podge? What does it do? Because it, it, um, it, uh, uh, makes it stiff and makes it stick onto there. And also I think you could just wipe it off, you know, oh, you so it, it actually puts a on coating it. on it. Yes, it does. And it, and it uh, adheres to it rather than just okay, wrapping so it's glue and tying it. Plus a coating. It, yeah. I think of it like Elmer's glue for, for projects. <laughs> okay. Oh, and you know, something else I'm just thinking about if you're serving burgers or some sort of messy, a hand food, Mm -hmm. like a tacos or something. Something that I bought that I love using for those kinds of foods is a red and white check wax paper in, and it comes in squares for mm. baskets, you know, like for restaurants. Oh, to put it, you know, like they would put so in those cute. plastic, um, yeah. like French fry baskets. Yeah. Would, yeah, I actually, I actually bought some of those just for fun use, uh, for outdoors. So you can just put your burger and you know, like a, a sandwich and chips or a burger and fries and you can just carry it around and just, then do you, you wear just a little a paper hat idea. when you serve <laughs> <those>? <laughs> Are you are you playing no, 50s but that's music a, in the background? Exactly. Are you on roller I think skates? it's just cute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Does Kevin like when you wear that like outfit? You. What's going on? Over there? <laughs> this is getting that's a whole new control. podcast. <laughs> that's a different holiday. Okay. Yes. Anyway, well, okay. And the um and the other thing using tin cans, this is so cute, is get those cans that maybe you get like the San um like tomatoes in, you know, the big ones. Paint them red, white, and blue punch holes in them and add candles to them. And you can place them like I, we have a porch that we have stairs uh, going down to like our, our walkway. I thought, Oh wow. Grouped on the stairs. That would look so cute or just, you know, on tables outside that would make such an adorable um, like a candle lit outside table because you remember we've got all the little the little holes and I'd put citronella in that. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing you can do is then just make a little wire um, a little wire handle and you know those wrought iron crooks. I mean we have tons of those. Bring them out and line your walkway with those. Oh, the shepherd hooks. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. cute. Yeah, yeah, that's just a great so idea. many adorable ideas. So so many ideas, so little time, you know. Well, yeah, especially since it's um, June 27th. So, you know, just take mm-hmm. one or two of these and run with yeah, it. <laughs> there you Maybe go. Maybe just spray paint your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another thing I saw that was really cute on Pinterest is to take uh, watermelon triangles, you know, where you cut it and the rind is still mm-hmm. on the watermelon, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then cut a hole and put the popsicle sticks in there. And then kids can carry it around with a popsicle stick. Oh, that's so that cute. And so it looks a, a little idea. more like a little more festive. Mm-hmm. Very festive. Everything's better on a stick. That's what kids That's say. what I thought, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fun. Let's let's can we turn our attention to a few recipes? 
Sure. I have, I mean, I think what is a 4th of July celebration without potato salad girls? Like seriously. Oh, I love well, I've heard salad. that your potato salad is the best ever in the It whole is world. my grandmother's recipe. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I give it out, I'm giving a gift. Seriously, the best you will ever, ever, ever eat. I'm going to mm-hmm. have to try it because my mother-in-law <sighs> is amazing. It is really Mm. I think we're going to have to do a slide. Hey, I would. I, I have no fear about that. I would say Whoa. bring it on. <laughs> to make it, you have to make your own pickles though first. So my- <laughs> no, no. I make. I use. I use. You have to use Clausens like in the refrigerator. They have to be the garlic. Okay. Dill well, this one requires her that- sweet pickles. So you start with pickles. But oh then yeah, you we add don't this do this particular sweet. spice. Oh, so this and you is have to pickle soup. Well, here's the thing, yep. girls. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. could serve both. One is a dill, and one is a sweet. Uh, I know. Mm. I know, and I love having okay, different now, potato salads. Now yeah. I know it's on Yvonne's blog. Uh huh. I'm doing the show notes for this show because it's Wednesday, <laughs> so I want to get. I'm going to have to. Yeah, Anita? I don't have mine. I know. I'll have to put it online. Okay, Anita, between now and then, you have to make and do a post on it. Okay, I will try. Well, and if you okay. don't want to do a post because you can't make it a French If I don't have time for a post, I'll send you the recipe and you can put it on. Okay. Oh, that's, that's nice. Okay. okay. Here's the other thing. I have this recipe, and I mean, you could, we this is our most made thing we make all summer, mm-hmm. is we grill vegetables. You could do them in the oven, but we use the grill. And um, we do eggplant, zucchini, portobello mushrooms, um, let me think, peppers, onions. I'm just thinking I must have something, I must have left something out, but I do have a post on it. Okay. And then you roast them and you bring them in, and then you make this balsamic vinaigrette that, and then you use chiffonades of basil, but this vinaigrette that I'm going to, it's just, again, here's a gift to you. It's like the best marinade in the entire world. You can put it on fish. You can put it on chicken, you can put it on beef. It is so delicious. But if you put it on these vegetables and we eat the vegetables cold, we eat them hot, we eat them cold in a salad. You know, we, they're just, it's a gift that keeps on giving. We love them. And I usually make a huge tray of them because once you eat them and you think, oh, grilled vegetables. No, I you love taste grilled vegetables. it though with the, with that. No, that's one of my favorite things. Put it on the stick. And everybody likes that. <laughs> She's on that's the That's called a shish kebab. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> everybody likes that. Um, yeah. Okay, that is so that that's such a good idea. That sounds good. And the thing is, if you have, and if you have a a go to marinade slash vinaigrette in your wheelhouse, Repertoire. that's so good. Mm-hmm. And what I really am looking for, and maybe you guys have something, is a great salad dressing. So you don't have to tell me now, but if you have something, maybe we can add that in. I time. have a whole post on uh, homemade salad dressing. Okay, that's really good because. I've been buying mm-hmm. the bottled, and I just want to stop doing. Oh, it. it's so easy. I know, yeah. Me, I mean, right. Well, and I, yeah, because I, I make so many different salad dressings, mm-hmm. and I rarely have a recipe. I just kind of throw things in. I, that's how mm-hmm. I. If I'm going to do it myself, yeah. I'm just like, oh, a little Dijon, oh, a little olive oil, yeah. Da, da, da. But I never can remember what I did the time. Well, before. I have no, a, I the, can't either. And sometimes I just use some jam mixed with some oil mm-hmm. and <gasps> a little bit of vinegar, like a, like a raspberry that. vinaigrette. Oh my gosh, it's mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. It never even dawned on me. Gosh. And here's the other thing. There are so many fabulous either infused oils or infused vinegars like blood orange vinaigrette yeah. with blood orange vinegar, a great olive oil, a little bit of mustard, uh, salt, yeah. and pepper. I mean, the post I have has there, it's called like a formula or a recipe and you could plug whatever you want to in it. So if you sort of, so yeah, if you know the formula, the sky's the limit. Yeah, well, in lime juice and lemon juice, I mean, really, mm-hmm. just with some spices and just a little bit of oil. But you're right. If you're making a vinaigrette, it is supposed to be the correct ratio of oil to mm-hmm. vinegar. And what is that? I'm trying to remember. Well, it depends. Some people like it. I don't like it where, you know, your lip puckers up. So I do yeah. like three parts. It should be two two to one, like two That's parts what I was thinking. oil, two- one part. But right. I use three to one because I just like it a little smoother and I don't mind. And I like it. I don't like it saturating my salad. You know, it's just a total preference. Yeah. But a lot of times when I'm eating, I just sprinkle uh, lemon juice all over my salad and then uh, sprinkle in some just a favorite herb mix of, you know, mm-hmm. just from my spice rack and, um, you know, don't even go with any oil. That's a great idea too. It's so true about what lemon does. I guess my mother in law mm-hmm. taught me that she puts lemons in stuff I would never think. Like she makes this incredible 
wintertime food, this goulash. And I was like, she's putting lemon, just a squirt of it into the brown sauce. And I'm like, what are you doing? And it's just it so brightens right. it, it up. brightens it up. Mm-hmm. So smart. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Also, I put it in my um, slow cooker ham and bean soup. It makes all the difference in oh, the see? world. Oh, yeah, see? Yeah, see? I didn't, you know, until that a couple of years ago when she I caught her doing that. I was mm-hmm. like, what's going on mm-hmm. here? That's makes the secret. Difference. All right. If you like Southwest flavors, I also have a really good Southwest pasta salad. Okay, well, I have, I have the best pasta, pasta salad, salad ever. Mm-hmm. So I'll put that in there. It's my okay. bacon, 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 you know, bacon for more <laughs> pasta yeah. salad. Because yeah. no matter how much I make, everybody's like, do you have more of that? Oh, I definitely want that. So I'll put that in there. Mm-hmm. I have a couple and they're very good too. But hey, I don't call mine bacon. So <laughs> that sounds good. Everything no is to beg better over there. Bacon. She's got plenty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bacon, mm-hmm. bacon. And the uh, other thing that mm-hmm. we forget about, it's so easy. Like put a... Make gourmet hot dogs. They are, they're de- like, how many people? I, I do love hot dogs. I usually don't eat them, but I, I love, love hot them. Dogs. Me too. But you don't, you know, how no many, comment. how many have you eaten in the last year? You know, probably none so far. Well, I get the Kobe beef ones. Yes. And so I just feel better. I, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm really eating a hot dog. Yeah. And I was going to say near me, I have a hot dog place that, I mean, I would, if I were going to serve hot dogs, I would get them from there. They make their own and they have all these gourmet, uh, varieties of hot dogs. Well, how easy would it be for 4th of July to set out all the fixins and make gourmet hot dogs on the grill? Yeah. How fun is that? The hot dogs themselves are all, re- they have like, I don't know, 10 different hot dog links. Hey, even better. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can do all the fixins. Yeah. That's always fun to kind of go down and grab whatever you want. Yes. Life. Yeah. Uh, there's something about summertime and hot dogs. They were okay. just meant for Well, you know, it, it was going to rear its nasty head, but you know, you might get invited someplace and like a potluck. Oh! 
<laughs> and you might uh-huh. and you might have to bring something uh-huh. not just I mean you could just honestly bring a bottle of rosé which is kind of red and be done with it or two bottles of rosé <laughs> and be done with it but if you were con- deciding to bring something I do have a very my one of my standbys and I don't even mind making it or traveling with it so it's mm-hmm. um y- mozzarella balls with the tiny little grapey tomatoes mm-hmm. or cherries with mm. just a folded piece of basil so you get I love that. um the small they're like skewer type because they're thicker um, toothpicks. So they're longer than a toothpick, shorter than a skewer. Uh-huh. You know, so maybe you can get a two of each. So you could do, or maybe you do, um, you start with a tomato, then you put a fold of basil, then you put a mozzarella ball, and then mm-hmm. you put another fold of basil, and then you top it off with a tomato. So that's about how long they are. Mm. Two tomato and one ball length. <laughs> Sandwich with uh, basil <laughs> folded and sandwiched in between. Looks so pretty. Then you can drizzle or not drizzle. And if you're traveling, I say, don't drizzle at home. Drizzle when you get there. So just bring don't a little Tupperware of one of these great vinaigrettes that we've been talking about. And Ugh. you can drizzle on, you know, on site. Listen, I have not eaten lunch yet. This is making me so hungry. No, those are so great. And, you know, they're not Mm -hmm. messy. And they are on a stick, just a very small stick. And you know the best thing to serve for the 4th of July? Watermelon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's what Anita said, on the stick. Yep, on a stick. But there's another way. If you cut a watermelon in half Mm -hmm. and then put put the cut side down and you cut it um, into like two or three inch slices and then turn it, uh, nine, not 90. Yeah. Let me think 45 degrees and cut it again. Mm -hmm. You can just literally pick the little, and then put it on on a plate. You can pick it up like by the rind and you just have this real long Mm -hmm. piece of watermelon to eat. Oh, great idea. You can put it on a stick too, which would be way more fun. You know what I saw again, another cute Pinterest idea, pull out that red wagon. I actually have one and then fill it with ice and drinks. Wouldn't that That's be great? The, the cutest oh. idea, and put a flag somewhere on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like at one end, you could put um, just a, a clear pitcher with uh, water, and put a lot of flowers in it, and stick flags in it, and then you could have mm-hmm. the ice, and then you could have the mm-hmm. things on top yeah, of it. I, I <gasps> meant like bottled drinks, but yeah, that too, like bottled. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. So cute. Well, we hope we've gotten you excited for the Fourth of July. Um, I'm just going to give you one little last suggestion before we go. And that's uh, if you live near a national cemetery, uh, make that a field trip. They have, it's a beautiful place to spend the 4th of July. Um, We have one near us and we've done that for years before we come back and have a big picnic. And uh, it'll really make you thankful for being, um, being in this country and a great way to celebrate. So we wish all of you a very happy 4th of July. Start now. It's not too late to get some of these little ideas on board. And remember, we're here to inspire you to have, to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.